Hello guys and welcome to Till Vacuum and Do Us Part. Today we're going to be working on a modern farmhouse patio makeover. So we're going to get straight into today's video. Um, I'm going to show you a little recap of what it looked like before right here. And then in the last couple of videos we've kind of been doing this in phases so I wanted to catch you up if you're new. We recently painted our ceiling blue because it's supposed to help with like wafts and birds and bugs and it really has helped out a lot. Here is the paint color we used just in case you're wanting to use it as well. You can just take a quick screenshot of it so you don't lose it. And here is an after of what it looked like with the blue ceiling. We absolutely love it. I did want to remind you guys, if you're new here, definitely hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss all of my makeovers and DIYs and cleaning on this channel. I would love to have you. Um, the next thing we've worked on was power washing the concrete. It was disgusting. We knew it was bad, but we didn't know how bad until we finally um, broke down and bought a power washer. It's probably one of the best investments we've made with our home because we get to clean so much. This is the one that we researched and bought with our own money it's not sponsored and i will definitely link that down below in the description box just in case you're in the market for one Okay, it wasn't completely dry yet, but you get the idea. It looked so much better. So now everybody's caught up, we're on the same page. So what you guys haven't seen yet is that we extended the patio. We did pay to have this done just because we were doing such a large area. If we were gonna be doing a smaller area, Chase could have done it, but I wanted to show you the process. They came and worked with us on the design and then we bought this little plumbing so we could put the gutter underneath it. We didn't want it running on top of the slab so it would crack. You can see I started like placing chairs there and stuff. I wanted to make sure it was the right size and the right shape and that everything was gonna fit on there that we wanted to. Um, so this part was the most expensive part of the makeover. We spent 1500, but that includes labor, concrete, and all of that. That was the best thing we've ever done. Here is an after. You can tell all the paw prints on it. I'm gonna eventually have to stain that, but that'll be in a future video. But it basically tripled the size of our patio. So we were so thankful we went ahead and did this step. Okay, now we're gonna assemble the fire pit. I know if you've been around for a while, you're like, wait guys, you already have a fire pit. We do have like a real brick with like real wood burning in the very back of our yard. Um, but it's like on the back of our acre and sometimes it's really wet and muddy or we just don't wanna go all the way back there. We just felt like this was gonna be more convenient just when we're wanting to do s'mores. We can just turn on the fire for a little bit and then turn it off when we're done. We have used this thing so much. So we spent 162 on this fire pit. I will link it down below in my description box. I'm just going to put all the links there. So if, if you have any questions, just click on that down arrow and check that out. But we are super happy with this. I like the size of it. It works really well. We've made hot dogs on it, s'mores, and all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, so it's a new day, new outfit, but Chase is still assembling. <laughs> so I needed chairs for the back patio. We're gonna be sticking a table back there so we can like host and eat breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, I needed some new chairs to put out it that were gonna hold up outdoors. They were gonna be able to handle the wind and the rain and wet swimsuits and snow and all that fun stuff. Um, typically, I like shopping garage sales for items like this, but we're not getting out much yet. I'm still doing a lot of my ordering online. So I went on to Amazon and found these. So I'll have them linked in my store, but I got all four of them for hundred bucks. So I felt like that was a really good deal. That makes them $25 a piece. They have lots of different colors to choose from. They're gonna be great for outside. I see a lot of people use these inside as well. They're great chairs and really affordable and really great for kids. So if you're needing a kid friendly chair that you can just wipe off, this is the one to get. Okay, if you guys are enjoying my channel with a little bit of cleaning, DIYs, and these home makeovers, I wanted to tell you about Megan. You will love her channel. It's very similar to mine. It's called Loving Life as Megan. I'm gonna link it down below in my description box, but she's done modern farmhouse kitchen makeover, front porch makeover. She's actually working on her patio, but won't go up until the end of the month. So definitely check her out. I'll leave that link down below in my description box. I promise you, you're gonna love her. But now we're gonna move on to 
to the next project. And for this project, we're gonna be going outside because we're gonna be dealing with concrete, but this is everything we're gonna be using. Um, this quick crate was only about $5.40 a bag, and we did need a total of six of them. We did three per pot. The pots were $20, and they're more of like a plastic. If you want the real wood, they were $40 each. That was just more than I was wanting to spend on this project, and we're super happy with how these turned out. Um, so Chase is gonna start making um, the concrete and I feel like it's making pancakes for at least the way I make pancakes. When I get it out of the box and I have to dump in the flour and then add water until I get the right consistency, that's exactly how this was. So we're doing it in a wheelbarrow, but you could do it in a bucket or whatever you need to, just use the resources you have. But he's gonna mix it up until it looks right to him. We did go ahead and put cardboard down because we're gonna do this on our flat patio. We are gonna put them down in the grass when we're done, but we wanted to make sure we were on a nice level surface so we could make sure everything dries evenly and the post we're gonna be putting in it, we wanted it to be exactly up and down. So he's just gonna work on this concrete and then we're gonna set the post within the pot itself and that's what you're gonna watch us do now. So for this part, we just used a four by four post and we found them for $10 a piece. They were actually really hard for us to find. Um, Lowe's was sold out, Home Depot was sold out. So we had to go to like a lumber supply in a nearby town. So definitely make sure you can find those before you like start your project. Um, we're gonna be doing more to this a little bit later, but as you can see, my job was just to stand there and hold the post. I think he, he even got onto me a few times cause I was supposed to be holding it perfectly up and down and I wasn't doing my job right but the good news is is you have time to adjust it it sets in about 15 minutes so you have to move quickly but not like panicking so once he was done filling it in he could just lean it which way when you're up close it's really hard to see if you have it like exactly up and down so this is what it looks like from the inside and it's just gonna dry real quickly and then we're gonna add flowers on the top later but that's all it is and then your post will stay um, out here it is super windy so we have to add that concrete if you live in an area it's not windy you may be able to just use like rocks or dirt and, and a flower pot but we definitely needed the weight of the concrete so we have two of these we're gonna be working on So we decided to paint the post. This is the black we use, so you can screenshot this again if you need a good black. You could also stain them, but I couldn't find the exact same color of stain as the table we're gonna be putting out here. Plus, I feel like stain doesn't hold up as long as paint. That's just my personal opinion. Somebody may differ with that. Definitely do what works best for you. But the black also matches our black gutters. So when we go on walks and see the back of our house, it really blends in because it just looks like another gutter coming down. So it doesn't look so busy. You guys know how I am with like clutter. So I'm really happy we went with the paint, but definitely just do what works best for you. I've seen them with stain and they are just as beautiful and it adds a nice wood element to outside. So definitely look into that. This is the paint we're using right here. Um, you don't have to get that nice of a paint, but when we're buying paint to be painting on the outside, this is left over from another job. We just go ahead and buy a little bit higher end. If we're going inside, I definitely buy the cheap stuff, but out here in all the rain and the snow and wind, um, it's just nice to get the better stuff that's gonna last a little bit longer. Once it was all dry, I let Savannah take some Sharpies and just write on the concrete just for something fun to do. We're gonna be adding dirt on top of this, so it's just something fun and different. Um, Chase did go ahead and add four holes to every pot. Since we're gonna be putting soil and flowers in there, we needed a way for it to drain since it can't go to the bottom. And this is super helpful because when I overwater or if it rains, it's not gonna like overflow and flood the flowers. So definitely don't leave this step out if you're gonna be putting flowers in yours and adding water to it or if it's gonna be setting out in an area where it could rain. But we were so happy with how these turned out. Um, I feel like they make such a statement back there even before we put the lights on. And I know it kind of looks like it's time consuming or it takes a while, but it really doesn't. It was so quick and easy. These are the hooks that we're gonna add to the top of them. So the whole point of these are to add lights to them so we can like string them back and forth. 
So for these, since we decided on black post, we went ahead and got black hooks so they would blend in right there. So you do see them, but they don't stand out. So I wouldn't put like a white hook on them. Um, I just put black so it would match. But now we're gonna go ahead and put some dirt and flowers in there. The bag of topsoil was about $2.50 a piece. We bought four bags and needed like a bag and a half. So definitely don't overbuy on that like we did. And then as far as the flowers go, we spent about $35, but this was just a fun activity with Savannah. I let her go in and pick whatever she wanted and she got to design the flower pots. It was really so much fun and she loves taking care of them. I love the pop of color when we come out. Um, those pots have been, just make me so happy when I come out. I should have flowers back there from the very beginning. I don't know why I had and put them out this year, but I'm so happy with how these pieces turned out. So if you're not really a flowers person or you can't keep them alive, I think this would have looked really well with either just like a pretty mulch or pretty rocks or stones. So don't get stuck on the flowers if you don't like them. I personally love it and I think it's a neat little touch out there, but you could also just do a really pretty rock that will last longer or like I said, a mulch or just something like that. Okay, and here is the after. I seriously cannot explain to you how much I love going outside and watering these and just looking at them. We have spent so much time on our back porch this week. Just putting a little effort into it has just made it feel like this whole extra space we have. Um, and we have been eating out there and everything. These flowers have just brought me so much joy. And you guys know me, I'm just not a color person. So, but they really have made me so happy. Now we're moving on to the next project, which is sealing the table. So I'm going to show you the things that I'm going to be using to seal this. I got the Thompson's water seal. This is actually so much easier than when you seal something that's staying inside of your house. I don't know why it only requires one coat, but then I just have a paintbrush that I have cleaned up from when I've painted before. And then I have this plastic container to pour it in. You obviously don't need that. You can use a paper bowl or plate or just whatever you need. I just always keep these as extra for or paint and stuff like this. And all I'm gonna do is apply it to the top and it just needs one coat. This was so easy. But this is the table that used to be in my dining room if you're new and then I've recently redone this space. And this is what it looks like now. I have a whole video that I posted last Sunday showing me remake that room on a budget. So definitely click on that link down below if you wanna check that out. Um, so we decided to move it out here and it has been used so many times. We love it, it fits the space better, but I am glad I sealed it because it has rained a few times and now I don't have to worry about it being, you know, messed up or anything out here. Okay, I have a little bit more time to talk here, so I wanted to talk about Megan one more time. I was a little rushed in the beginning, but like I was saying, she has some really cool modern farmhouse um, makeovers that she does, and they're all on budgets. They're all so doable. If you're a stay-at-home mom, so is she. You can do it just like her. So definitely check out those videos of hers, and I will have them linked down below in my description box. And if you decide to subscribe, which you should, because you're gonna love her, definitely let her know I sent you. So the blessed sign in the background, I actually DIY'd in another video. It was a little bit while back, but I like to just take either old signs that were on clearance or you found at garage sales. They could also be pictures and you just paint the whole thing black or the whole thing white and then use the opposite color. So I used white paint to paint on the blessed. That's actually the tattoo I have on my wrist. You guys came up with that idea and I loved it. So that's what I painted on there. You could also do a white sign with black writing, but I feel like farmhouse signs can sometimes be a little pricey and maybe not be in your budget so you can definitely just DIY it um, so yeah just look for those pictures at garage sales or Ross and then paint it yourself and then you can customize it to whatever you want 
I never showed you how the chairs turned out after Chase assembled them. I know you've probably seen them before, but I just wanted to kind of show you the front and the back just in case you were wanting to see them up close. So now I'm just going to start putting them at the table. The table is still wet, but as long as I don't touch it, it's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and just start decorating around it. So if you're wondering, I bought the gray chairs. They also have a gunmetal, which I've had in their like bar stools before. And I think I even love those better. I love these for outside, but if you need something just a little bit darker, definitely check out the gunmetal gray. I think those are gorgeous. The black were gorgeous, but I just didn't want it to get too black and white. They also have some beachy looking like aqua ones. I've seen baby pink. So definitely check out all those colors. It's definitely a fun way to add color if you like it. So here's just a quick look at how the space turned out. I do have like a long green plant to put on the table, but obviously I can't do that since the tabletop's still wet. Okay, now we're just at that fun point of the video where I'm gonna start decorating it and getting it all staged. Here's how the fire pit looks assembled. I love the height of it and it does have a cover on it. So if you wanna use it as like a tabletop and then it also has another cover that goes over this. So if it's rainy, it won't rust or anything. So I feel like it's just a really well-made piece. Um, these chairs that I'm putting out, I actually bought off Facebook Marketplace a long time ago when I lived in my last house, even before I was on YouTube, and it was $10 for the set. And then I also just add pillows to them, and those are from Ross. I typically never buy outdoor pillows unless they're from a garage sale. I feel like they're so expensive for an outdoor pillow. Just buy some cheap ones from the store that are on sale or on clearance, and you can throw them in the washer or change them out as needed, but I feel like outside stuff is like highly overpriced. But here's how this space turned out and this is one of my favorite spaces of all of them. So here is how the fire looks. It is gorgeous at night. I think I have a clip for you guys at the very end if you want to see it. And there's just a propane tank underneath this and there's a little door. So that's how we're able to get the fire. So this back porch would not be complete without patio lighting. We ordered these off Amazon and we ordered two and they were $40 each and they came with the light bulb. So that's a total of $80, but they were 48 feet long each. So we tried to guesstimate the space that we needed so we knew how many to order. You can see Chase right here is hanging up one of those white hooks. These were super inexpensive um, from Home Depot. And so we put white ones on the white house and then you can see right there we put black ones on the black pole just so they kind of blend in a little better not that we're trying to hide them we just don't want them to stand out and then chase just kept stringing them back and forth until we got the design we wanted we ended up having a little bit more than we thought so we ended up getting to do a little bit more of the space than we realized and i'll show you here in a second how we're going to secure these but at first the goal is just to kind of get them up there so we can see the design and to make sure we have enough slack before we start like tying everything down. I know somebody in this video is gonna ask me what George was doing. He's right there living his best life. He loves tanning his little belly when he comes outside. <laughs> so he likes to lay in the grass and kind of warm up from the AC. But here is how it turned out. I was so happy with the lighting. The lighting is definitely what pulled this space together. We leave it on all evening. I wanted to show you how we zip tied the cord to these hooks. It gets really windy here in Oklahoma, so we had to make sure they wouldn't like blow off. So that's how we secured them. And then here are the lights they sent. Um, I love the style of them. They're not huge, so they don't hang down real low. Um, and they put off just enough lighting. It's not like blinding at night, but it's just enough to like fill up the space um, at the very end of this video, I do have a picture and video of it dark so you can see how well it kind of lights it up. But now we're just going to work on putting all the bulbs into the sockets. If you 
are new here and you love these like home makeovers, definitely go check out some of my older videos because I have um, videos of painting our house white and black and working on our front porch and back porch. Um, we've worked on all those spaces. So if you love seeing stuff like this, don't forget to watch um, some of my older videos because I think you'll enjoy them. Now it is time to hide the cords. You guys know cords drive me crazy. So we went ahead and spray painted this cord white. I'll show you that in a second, but I like to staple them to the wall and siding so they're not like hanging and dangling and all over the ground. So if you're gonna buy a cord, obviously you can buy a white cord. Everybody pointed that out to me in this video when I posted it earlier. Um, but if you already have cords and you don't wanna waste money, I already had a cord, it was orange, and I already had a white spray paint, and so we just spray painted it. And so it was free instead of having to spend a ton of money on a cord. So that's why we did that in that previous video. And then Chase just has a staple gun. I use that everywhere. If you don't own a staple gun, definitely get one. <laughs> You'll use it all the time, just DIYing. And I just had him staple this from the top of the corner all the way down and all the way down to the bottom, just so we're not tripping over cords. Um, and you can see kind of the way we went up and around so I can plug it right in. Um, just visually so much more pleasing to the eye. Okay guys, and here's one last look at the before before we see the after. So take a real good look at this. And here is the after. It is such a huge difference. This is the daytime view. I'm gonna show you an evening and a nighttime just so you can kind of see the lighting. But oh my goodness, the difference it's made is huge. I cannot tell you the amount of time we are spending out here now um, where we never used to. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you watch these clips and just see some of the changes and just how everything turned out. So this is the view as soon as I come onto our back porch. I'm um, just kind of from one side to the other. I wanted you to just get a feel of the space and what I see when I come out. Now this is how it looks in the evening time. Um, as you can see, I was able to add that green plant so it adds a lot more life over there. I feel like the space just looks so much better, but you can see the sun setting. We have the fire pit burning. We do this every night now. We'll be out there playing cornhole or swimming, and I don't know. It's just a glorious sight, especially when you're like off the patio and you get to look at it. Here's kind of what the angle I'm talking about. I don't know. I just love this space so much. So since this clip I've actually taken down, you can see we already had lights up there before and we forgot to take them down in this clip. Um, so we took those down that are up there because it would have been too much lighting. I have added a rug out there and then I do want to eventually stain the concrete. I've just got to figure out how we're going to DIY that. And then I also want to add a flower bed to the side of the grill over there. So we still have some projects to do, but I'm so happy and thankful with how it turned out. If you already have the extended slab, this would be a very affordable um, makeover. That part's definitely what cost us the most money, but it was worth every penny because now we use the space so much more and the grass wouldn't grow there anyway. So the boys just tracked in tons of dirt and mud. So it was just a win-win. And here's how it looks at nighttime. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Um, if you ever have any comments, just leave them down below and I'll be sure and get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe here if you're new and don't forget to check out Megan's channel. I'm gonna have all those links down below in my description box. And here's one little last look of how the patio looks from the inside. I ah, just love it. But I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Shit. <laughs>